like, Jesus Christ, don't blink in that one. Somebody might actually die. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Her Business Podcast. As always, my name is Ferris Sharari. And today, today, boy, do we have a lot of topics to discuss. And Josh is abroad. Josh is away, which is okay because the show goes on and I brought in a damn good replacement. It's my boy, Chris DiCarlo from Caged In Podcast. How we doing today, my boy? I'm doing good, brother. You know, whenever Josh is away and doesn't feel like doing his job, I like to step in and, and fill the gaps. You know <laughs> what I mean? Hopefully hey, Josh is having a good time abroad, man. I'm a little jealous. I'm not going to lie. Dude, he's in Milan right now, living it the fuck up. I've been watching his stories and it's been, it's been... That, that kid's a little bit good, man. So I'm, I'm, I'm hella jealous, but again, the show goes on, and 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 Jalen Turner isn't the only one stepping in on short notice this weekend. <laughs> that's, huh? right. that's right, man. You know, sometimes when you get that call, you got to step up and put in the work. That's what that's I'm here what to I'm, do, man. That's what I'm here to do. That's what I'm talking about. Well, I appreciate the time tonight, bro. There's a, there's, there's a lot of topics that we are here to discuss, uh, and I, and I want to start in the UFC. Of course. I think we, we have a fun card this weekend. Uh, last weekend they were off, no UFC. Little born. We had some fun boxing uh, happen mm -hmm. last weekend. Which do you want to talk about for a second? I mean, that was kind of fun. Hey, the little Benavidez, you know, uh, yeah. Boo Boo Andrade. Yeah, dude, I watched the the Benavidez fight. I thought it was a blast. Benavidez looked fucking awesome. You know, mm -hmm. I, I expected him to go out there and and look good. Um, the kid's just an absolute animal, bro. He's an absolute animal. It's now it's time for for him to start touching that upper echelon of that division for sure. Yeah, man. I mean, the Canelo fight, like, I mean, it's uh, bound to happen. Yeah, like, there's, there's really nothing else. And and Benavidez needed a year like this year, like running through plant the way he did, and then Boo Boo. After people were saying Boo Boo, nobody wanted to fight him, and 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 history proved that Canelo's dodged him, ran from him in multiple weight classes, all these things, and then Benavidez just like yeah, smacks him up like that. It's crazy. Six. It was crazy, man. He he definitely looked, looked amazing. Like, he didn't even look like he got touched in that fight. Like yeah. I know Boo Boo had some. He had, he got some good shots in there, but Benavidez walked out of there looking like he wasn't even in a fight. Um, couldn't get off the stool. Is 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 uh his trainers and his coaches in the corner? You know, called the fight midway through or at the end of the sixth, I believe it was end of the sixth. Um, and you know, shut it down, and that was the end of that. But. Dude, the kid Benavidez looked awesome, man. Like you said, it's it's bound to happen. The fight with Canelo, um, even if it's not him, maybe you run him in there with with Charlo, who was on the co-main for that card. Maybe you run him in there with with him. I don't know. I just feel like he's he's like, and he, it was a pay per view card too. So the kids obviously at that level now where they're trying to push him and trying to get him to sell. So I feel like it's inevitable at this point that we're going to see him versus Canelo. There's nothing else, man. There's nothing else. There's nothing else. So mm -hmm. I'm glad, agreed, I'm glad man, we agreed. agreed there. But back on, back to UFC, man. Back to UFC Austin. So they were they were they were MIA last weekend. So we just had boxing to watch. Uh, but they're back this weekend with a fucking card, I tell you. Uh let's just start, man. Right at the top. Benil Deriush taking on Armand Tarukian. Mm -hmm. Have you seen uh, Armand's nickname? I probably have, but I don't remember it off the top of my head. Dude, it is impossible to pronounce. <laughs> it's, That's probably it, why I don't remember it if I can't pronounce it. <laughs> it gotta be in 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 his Latin Armenian or something, man. No way that's in like, yeah. Because yeah. I was trying to write it down. I was like, there's no point because I'm not even gonna like, attempt this on the show. Skip that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> not but butchering that one. Nonetheless, it's a fun, fun, fun fight headlining uh, this weekend. What do you think about it? The main event, man, is it's it's definitely a competitive fight. You know, Benil Dariush um, is a guy that's been around. I think he's coming up on 10 years in the UFC. Fun fact, though, about Benil Dariush, this is his first pay-per-view, or this is his first main event of his entire career, which I thought was crazy considering how, like, how many fight night cards there have been. And, like, we've had some really bummy main events, let's be real, like a lot of bummy fight night main events for some guys. We're like, how'd that guy get a main event? Benil Diriu seems like a guy that should have already had one by now. I know he was slated to have one, and I think like an injury or something pulled it off. But the fact that this is his first main event of his career is crazy. First five-rounder as a main event is crazy. Um, you know, he's coming off that loss to Charles Oliveira in, uh, in June. Uh, but before that, he had a very long win streak. Um, and then on the flip side of that, you got Armand Sarukin, who is 7-2 in the UFC, one of the hottest prospects in that division. Um, 
his only losses to like two of the best guys in that division right now, Islam Makachev and, and Matush Gamrat. Uh, and also the crazy part about the, the Benil Dariush stat that he's never had a main event. Arman Sarukian has been a main event fighter. He fought five rounds versus Gamrat. So when it comes to main event experience, the younger guy has more main event experience in this one, which I think is, is actually crazy when you, when you think about it that way. Um, I think this is, this is a very competitive main event. I know Sarukian's coming in as a, as a pretty sizable favorite. Um, but ben, Benil Dariush is one of those crafty veterans, man. You can never count this guy out. Uh, he loves to play spoiler. He can come in here and and throw a wrench into Armand's plans of, of taking that next step in the division. And, and that's what feels like this is this event's kind of set up for him to do. It's kind of set up for Armand to beat Benil, and then take that kind of skyrockets him into that next upper into that next echelon of the division. But you know, Dariush, he's not as old as people think he is, considering how long he's been around. Um, so he can very much get a win here, play spoiler and kind of take that spot and put himself back up in that top end of the division where he was before the loss to, to Oliveira. So I'm very excited for the main event, man. I think it's a very underrated main event when you can look at the entire card. Cause dude, this card is actually crazy. It might be one of the best fight night cards of the year. Mm -hmm. The fact that we have Misha Tate fighting and she's not even on the main card, a six fight main card and Misha Tate can't even make the main card. It's crazy to me. Um, so that's a very, very deep card, bro. And the headliner is definitely up there for sure. Yeah, bro. I mean, you, a former world champion, not even being co 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 main is crazy. It's literally insane. Like, she's on the prelims and she's an underdog. Like, the girl that she's fighting is supposed to beat her. You know what I mean? Mm. So, it's like, and the fact that she's not even on the main card, like, you, you put her on the main card as a name, bro. Like, there's, there's a couple fights on this main card that you could, like, Clay Guida is on the main card. Like, put Misha Tate on the main card. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. But, yeah. you know, UFC is going to UFC like they always do, you know? That's right. That's right. They love to have, like, a headline of the those prelims to to be somewhat entertaining to keep those uh, viewers engaged. But it's it's all the ESPN Plus card. It's like, what's... Yeah, it's like you're going to put it on at... What time does the prelims start? 3 o'clock? Mm -hmm. You're going to put it on on ESPN Plus at 3 o'clock and just let it, let it run all the way to the end of the thing anyway. So, I don't know. I guess there's not really much of a... I don't really see the strategy behind putting a fight like that on the prelims for a card like this. I understand if it's like a pay-per-view or a big main card on main, like on major ESPN or something, but, or ABC or wherever they're running their major fight night cards these days. But if you're just letting an ESPN plus card run, I don't really see the strategy behind it, but I guess that's why I'm here and they're there. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, what do we know? But <laughs> you made a lot of good points about the main event, man. Uh, one of the, one of the, I had no idea that this was uh, Benil's first main event, first and foremost. Yeah, it's wild. And he uh, he said in media this week in one of his uh, scrums that he was really appreciative over the opportunity headline a card. And I, I don't know. Benil, I feel like, is a veteran at this point. So, like, that appreciation felt like something that Armand, you know, like a younger cat would have said. But, you know, huge respect to Benil. That guy's a legend. And coming off a loss... It's almost like I I don't know what to expect, especially a loss like that in the first round yeah. in the in a in a title eliminator against Charles Oliveira. Uh yeah, I don't I don't know what that does to to one's mental and, and, and to rebound and come back against a guy like Armand, who, like you said, is a killer, uh one of the young studs in the UFC who nobody really wants to fight. Everybody's claiming this is the next next champ this is the next this is the second coming of uh islam makachev and this is the best guy to and all these things although he lost to him that you mentioned right. all these things are exciting and uh yeah man 27 years old is crazy to think about he's wicked young the mm -hmm. future is bright a loss wouldn't do i don't know i feel like the, a loss would be more damaging to a Darius in this situation i agree but but it, it again it's tough like the rebound to rebound to an Armand fight, I, I just I just don't think it was a smart move for Benil. Uh, and I did hear him this week say that DP was ducking him. He was trying to get that DP fight. Made sense. Yeah. They're both coming off losses. They both find themselves in that top five. It just made sense, but it, it fell through. It's a tough matchup, man. So the question becomes, Chris, <laughs> you said Armand's a big favorite, but who, mm -hmm. who, who are you betting your money on? I know you're a big oh, gambler. Man. I am, I am. Uh, the odds, I have. I don't have the odds in front of me. Actually, I can pull them up because I'm a degenerate. I have them I... like one, one flick away. <laughs> Just a uh, few short clicks. Yeah. Oh, they don't even have them up on ESPN yet. That's I had a upset. great, great betting weekend last weekend. Did you? I didn't know you were a degenerate like me. I, I'm not, dude. I just threw in a parlay, and I was like, you know what? 
Katie Taylor's a, 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 a dog. What the fuck? Yeah. So I threw her in there with Benavidez and Charlo. Cool little plus four twenty ticket. Oof, that's money right there. Yeah, man, it was it was a, it was a fun a fun that's weekend. Fine. But uh, but who who you got? Who you got for the for the main event? I I got a ride with with Armand here. You know mm. the, the points that each of us had made. It just makes more sense for this to be like the opportunity for Armand to take that step and and take that next jump into the division. Um, so if I'm looking at the fight and looking at the matchup, I'm going with Armand. Um, there's probably not much upside on betting Armand money line. I'm assuming that he's a pretty sizable favorite. I don't know the exact number, but I'm assuming that it's probably not going to be worth your money to be betting him money line unless you're going to put up a lot of bread for it to like, give you a, a decent uh, a buyback there. Um, so I would have to, you know, do a little prop, probably run it as like an Armand via decision. I don't know if you want to go that way. Like, I don't know if you can. I'm trying to figure out how would I see Armand putting Benny away. It's like I'm having a hard time envisioning a finish. So I'm going I'm to ride with Armand via decision. Uh, he has that five round experience that Benil doesn't. I think in the later rounds, his his gas to this dude's gas tank is literally endless, bro. The guy, I, he never seems to get tired. And he's always active. Um, so yeah, give me Armand by decision if if I'm putting my money on it. Mm. Armand is a sizable favorite. I got it in front of me. He's a minus two seventy eight. Yeah, so you need to put up two seventy eight to make a hundred bucks. It's a little, it's a little hefty for me. Yeah, agreed, agreed. I don't love it, but on my notepad, I have. Piece. Exactly. On my notepad, I have written down Armand via decision. So see, we're on the same page, man. You know, that's why you brought me in here last minute because you know that's, that we're like this. That's right. That's right. Which, which, you know, I probably should get somebody that that'll argue with me, but I, you know, I just, I just can't go. I, there's nobody else that I'm calling on short notice. And Chris, <laughs> motherfucker, DeCarlo, my guy. All right. But speaking of else, who got the call on short notice? Jalen Turner. Mm. Got the call against Bobby Green, who, of course, we were all probably way more excited about the Dan Hooker fight. Unfortunately, he pulled out with a broken arm again, which is uh, like, what? <laughs> Dude's what got habit? I don't know. Dan Hooker likes to find himself getting injured. You mm. know what I mean, I don't know. It's just something about the guy. Yeah. It happens and a lot to him, it feels like, which it feels bad. It does. It feels horrible, man, especially coming off a fight with Jalen and he broke his arm at the end of that one. So just to break it all over again, in preparation to a Bobby Green fight that we were all looking forward to, a five-round banger in front of crowd in Austin, yeah. I'm feeling for Dan Hooker uh, tremendously. But have you seen that Izzy clip of him talking about how much of a maniac Dan Hooker is? Uh, no, I, not off the top of my head, no. Oh, man. Oh, man. That's one of, the, that's one of my favorite clips. I've seen it earlier this week. Uh, it was hit whenever Dan Hooker fought that pa Paolo... Um, uh, it, it was the Peruvian dude who was like a leg lock specialist, and he had, uh, he had his, he, he was in that horrible leg, and he was just sitting there waiting for the round to end. And at one point, fucking the dude looked back, like, is he still? Like, yeah. Is he is, is is this guy human? And is he just narrating? Get it? It's a great clip. Yeah, man. Those those uh, Australians are different out there, bro. Different, man. Different, different, different business. And 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 Dan Hooker's definitely gone through like a midlife crisis. Mm -hmm. Well, you know the blonde hair, blonde hair speaks for itself. Like that's, that's just yeah, that's just like the MMA fighter midlife crisis, random tattoos and blonde hair. That's, that's pretty yeah. much what you do. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 already written. Uh, <laughs> Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green. What do you think of it? Uh, dude, I actually have a. The, I'm like I agree with you 100. We would all much rather see Bobby Green versus Dan Hooker in a five round slobber knocker for as long as it would have lasted. Um, that one they made it a five round co-main event for a reason that because that was a, a fight for the fans. And unfortunately, that one falls through. Jalen Turner versus Bobby Green. I there's a couple of things that I am interested in here. Uh, Jalen Turner is absolutely massive for the lightweight division. So, so the fact that he's taking this fight on short notice, I'm curious how the weight cut's going to go. Um, and if he does get in there and make the weight like a professional, like he should, then at that point it becomes, how's he going to look in the fight? How's the cardio going to look uh, going into the later rounds, into rounds two and three? Should it go there? Uh, so those are a couple of things that I'm looking for on the Jalen Turner side. That aside, though, the kid's an absolute stud. Um, 
one of the one of the best in the division. I feel like his last two fights he lost by split decision. So we're talking like one point away on a judge's scorecard from him being on a two fight win streak now rather than a two fight losing streak. Um, so Jalen Turner, him as a fighter, I, I love the kid. Uh, the height, the reach, absolutely amazing. Uh, this is a is a big risk for him taking this fight on short notice versus an absolute dog like Bobby Green. Um, he, that's not an easy win for Jalen Turner to get back on track. So the fact that he you know, went out of his way to accept this fight on short notice, like I said, um, versus somebody like Bobby Green is is risky for him. Um, he is a favorite on this fight. He technically should win in the eyes uh, of Vegas. Um, but like I said, Bobby Green's a dog. You can never sleep on this dude. But if Jalen Turner does win, then that should, you know, hopefully start him back on that track of getting back on track, getting another win under his belt right into 2024 and hopefully snatch up a couple more W's and get him to the top of the division. Bobby Green, on the other hand, I mean, come on. King Bobby, he's King Bobby for a reason, man. The kid, the dude's an absolute stud. Mm -hmm. The last fight, man, that, that 33 second knockout of Grant Dawson, he was a massive underdog in that fight. Nobody thought he was going to win. Um, he comes out there and sleeps an, a massive up and coming prospect, um, steals the entire show and, you know, rides into this one uh, about as high as he can get. Uh, I'm interested to see Bobby's striking game and his game plan for this fight versus Jalen. Like I said, considering the extreme height and reach advantage that he's going to have on Bobby, I'm ex I'm excited to see uh, what Bobby Bobby Green does with that. And for me, I'm looking at like how can Bobby Green win this fight, right? Because like I said, Bobby Green's coming as an underdog. No one's really expecting him to win this one versus Turner. Um, I think his best his best avenue to victory would be to just kind of get in there wear on Jalen Turner. Like I said, coming off that weight cut, I don't know how his cardio is going to hold up. So I think Bobby Green's got to make it dirty. He's got to find a way to get inside that long reach, whether it be with his grappling or wrestling. We know he likes to come in there, stand and bang. So he's going to have to be active, be pressure all the time, get in his face. Don't let him, don't let him breathe and hopefully get him into those late rounds and, and, and do some damage and put him away or, or steal a decision. Uh, I'm very intrigued by this main, by this co-main event. And the more the most of it is seeing how Jalen Turner is going to react to making weight on short notice, considering how big he is for the division. Mm. Six three lightweight is insane, huh? It's wild, bro. It's yeah. insane. Agreed. He's taller than some middleweights, man. Like light yeah, heavyweights. Bro. He's some taller than some of those guys. It's nuts. Yeah, yeah. he's taller than Tai Tuivaso. Yeah, and that's a heavyweight. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah, it's crazy how different people carry weight. But again, like I agree with everything you said, the size is going to be one of the biggest factors. That it's going to be interesting to see how Bobby copes with it. I don't see Bobby grappling him though. You know what I'm saying? I don't see Bobby trying to make it. Like, uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Or like a like. I wouldn't. Clinch. Of course, like a classic Bobby Green, you're not going to expect him to do stuff like that. I'm just kind of trying to look at it from the side of like, how are you going to get this guy tired? Mm. Keeping keeping Turner at distance, keeping keeping Turner at reach, it's not really going to gas him out when he's. Maybe he has a rough cut. Maybe he he, he looks bad on the scale. Like, well, how are you going to take advantage of that? You got to, you know, do something different. So maybe Bobby Green does something like that. I'm, I'm curious to see if he does. Mm, it'll be fun to see, man. But the weight cut, the weight cut is the biggest question because we know we've seen it in the past. Guys take fights on short notice and it usually almost never works out for them. Especially right. bigger guys that already have trouble making the weight. You know what I mean? Mm. This is not his natural weight class for a guy this size. So, yeah, um, that's but that's the storyline for this fight that I'm most intrigued by. And then Jalen Turner in media this week. I don't know if you uh, if you listen to the scrums or pay attention to the lead up at all, but he just doesn't seem too excited about the opportunity. He almost seemed like he had no other option. Not necessarily that he was forced into it, but like there was – no saying no in a situation like this in, in a world where i felt like there was a bunch of people raising their hand whenever da dan hooker fell out there was like uh, uh jared gordon was screaming for it. terrence mckinney was calling like there was a whole bunch of people and now granted these guys aren't ranked but i feel like i don't know like jalen turner is a guy coming off two losses this is a winnable fight if he had a full camp if he had a full fight camp and he wasn't cutting all this weight, like he probably walks around at 190, 180, something like that, and, and, and cut all the way down to 155 in nine days. It's crazy, man. Crazy, yeah, I, crazy stuff. 
And if history tells us anything, it's it's short notice fights are not the way to go unless you're Bisbank or you're Aspinall, mm. you know, or I guess unless you're you're from fucking the UK. But hey, so on the back of that, does that mean you're uh, riding with Bobby Green Saturday night? Are you willing to stake that claim? I'm. So, I was. <laughs> I was so impressed. Now, I've been counting Bobby out for like the past four four fights of his, minus the the Tony Ferguson fight. But aside from that, like everybody he fought, I was like, I see Bobby losing this mm-hmm. again. I see like my the the fun bet of the week is Jalen by submission. Yeah, for me that's like the long limbs, like. They might end up on the ground. Jalen could snipe some shit that I just like. Who knows? You know that that's right. my fun pick for the week. But I I, I feel like it's going to be Bobby Green, man. You think Bobby goes out there and he puts him away, or do you think that he kind of he kind of wears on him, grinds on him, takes mm-hmm. him to the deep waters, and you know steals a decision? Which yeah. way are you kind of leaning for for a Bobby win? I see. I think if Bobby wins, it'll be by uh, finish. I think the dehydration, the lack of water to the brain, it just it makes you vulnerable in these situations. And a guy like Bobby coming off his last one, and this and like, yeah, this might be recency bias coming off a 33 second KO against Grant Dawson, who like, yeah. you know, was on a, on an upward trajectory. Like that shit was crazy. But yeah, man, short notice. I, I, I never I never see it working out in the person stepping in on short notice's favor. So give me Bobby Green. All right, man. I'm I'm with it, man. I'm with it. I like that pick. Uh, I love Bobby Green, man. He's one of those guys that's like he's a fans fighter. Everybody loves the guy. Whenever he steps in, you're like Bobby Green's fighting tonight. Make sure I'm tuned in for that one. Whether it's main card or prelims, doesn't matter. Um, dude, I love me some Bobby Green. I actually met him in Vegas one time uh, when I was at an event. At one of the fights, he was in the section right in front of me, and I walked down there and I said, "What's up?" to him, and a uh, super nice guy. Um, we ha- this is actually a funny story that we always say because I went up to go say hi to him and I was like kind of behind him. I tapped him on the shoulder. I was like, hey, Bobby, I had a picture with you. He went to like swing his arm around me and his elbow hit me in the head. So now every time I'm like, yeah, I got elbowed in the face by Bobby Green and it didn't even hurt that bad. You know what I mean? So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, dude, he's a wicked nice guy, though, when I met him. Um, so shout out to Bobby Green. You I get the be- flick? Of course I got the flick. Oh, know? man, we got to see the flick, bro. Post, the, right. post the flick. We'll post the flick. Um, and then Jalen Turner, man, I just think, I don't know, man. It's hard to pick against Jalen Turner wherever he's fighting. I'm, I'm going to go with Jalen Turner, though. I'm going to ride with Jalen Turner. I think he's going to get it done. I don't think Let's he's going to get it done. Um, I know he, he's a little bit of a favorite, so you're probably going to have to take Ferris's fun bet on this one. Jalen Turner by submission, I'll ride with that. I'll ride Let's with that. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, I mean, Jalen, at, at this stage of his career, has only lost to – like really tough motherfuckers so yeah who knows man Agreed. who knows speaking of tough motherfuckers man cartels captain rob font man back in the building making a return making a return against and he's welcoming a familiar face and 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 i'm sure i'm speaking for all mma fans whenever i'm saying we're just happy this guy's not fighting brandon moreno for the 20th time Thanks. David Figueredo's a step in, a stepping up a weight class, moving up to Bantam weight, which the conversation surrounding him for so long has been, this guy, how the fuck does he make 125? And now he's moving up that weight class. Could this be his proper weight class? We're going to find out. But ultimately, Chris DiCarlo, tell me what do you think about the matchup? Bro, you know, you know where we're from. So off the back of that, you know that we're already excited about this fight going into it. On, Rob Chris. Font, Rob Font could fight anybody, and we would all be hype as hell. The fact that he's fighting Davis and Figueredo, you already know that we're super hype about this one. A former title holder at the flyweight division, welcoming Rob Font is going to be welcoming welcoming him into this division. Um, it's it's just a super exciting fight on paper. This is the one that I am the most excited for in this entire card. Uh, I think most of us from this region can say that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's, let's look at the fight itself, though, right? The matchup is very close on paper. I think that this matchup between the two of them is actually uh, a very close matchup. Um, so I think it's going to be a banger, just, uh, just the way that this fight is set up. Obviously, Rob Font stepped in on his last fight, lost to Corey Sanhagen. Um, short notice fight. Props to him for taking the gamble. Unfortunately for him, it didn't pan out. Had he won that one, we'd be having a completely different conversation. Um, 
but props to him for stepping in versus a killer like Corey. Like I said, unfortunately, things didn't go his way. And then, like you said, man, all of us seeing Figueredo on the docket, we're just happy he's not lining up against Brandon Moreno again. The dude's fought him four times in a row, hasn't fought anybody else since 2020. Um, so very excited to see him fight some new blood. Rob Font versus Davidson Figueredo, man, absolute banger. Looking at the fight logistically, Rob Font is going to have the size advantage. Obviously, Figueredo is coming up to Bantamweight, so Rob Font naturally is going to have the size and for me, it's going to be Rob Font's boxing, one of the crisp, one of the most crisp boxers uh, in the UFC. Him and Calvin Cater, obviously, two of the best to do it in, when it comes to the boxing department. Um, and then for me, Figueredo, his kicks are amazing. Um, some of the best kicks uh, in the lighter weight classes in the UFC, if not in, in the entire UFC in general. And then it's the way he mixes his kicks with his takedowns. So that's going to be the matchup for me. It's Rob Font's boxing in his hands and his crisp jab. Um, versus Davis and Figueredo's uh, kicks and then his sneaky uh, entrances into his takedowns. Um, but if you look at the Moreno matchups, the four fights that he had versus Figueredo, I think the most trouble that Figueredo had with Moreno was the fact that Moreno's boxing was so clean in the way that um, he was able to beat Figueredo was with the stand up and with the hands and being able to, you know, stay on his feet, use his angles, um, land his punches, and kind of get Davis and Figueredo frustrated that way. Um, like I said, man, this matchup, it just honestly, it sells itself when you look at it on paper. And then when you really take a deep dive into it, you can see the intricacies and what makes it so great. The fact that both these guys are still in there are in their mid thirties. Um, a win for one of these guys is huge and a loss kind of hurts a lot, to be honest, I think, um, given their age and given their placement in the, in the division for each guy, you know, Rob wins this fight. He beats a, a former title holder. Uh, kind of gets himself right back up into that picture where maybe he's a few fights away from getting mixed into the into the conversation. And then Figueredo, if he comes in and beats Rob Font, he automatically launches himself into the top 10 of a new division and kind of can start his run at, a, at another title there. So I think the storylines for both sides are amazing. I think the matchup is, is really close. I think it's going to be a, a really good fight, to be honest. Yeah, agreed, man. Agreed. It's gonna be definitely a fun striking fight. I'm sure Figgy's gonna try to mix it up, try to try to shoot, especially after Rob's last one against Corey. It feels like that's that's the clear game plan is to try to expose that. But if you come on my show, the last thing, the last thing you're gonna hear out of my mouth is, is picking up a picking against the cartel guy. It's facts. Call me delusional, say what you want, but I'm taking Rob, man. I can't can't hold that against you, man. And and you know, I'm on the I'm on that same side of the fence. I'm very curious in this fight. Like I said, this is a coin flip fight for me. But if I'm looking at if Rob Font can keep this fight standing, keep this fight on the feet, this is Rob Font's fight 100 percent So that's mm -hmm. what I'm looking for, man. I'm looking for him to keep this fight standing, keep that jab in his face all night move those feet, stay off, stay off the center line and just piece this guy up and, 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 and get a victory, man. Let's go. Uh, the rest of the card is, is a lot of fun. We've been talking about UFC for about 30 minutes at this point. So I want to transition into boxing soon, but before we get into that, I just want to give you a chance to talk about any other fights on this card that you're like, I cannot wait Ooh. and or fights that you're like, I am hammering this line. Okay, um, let me just run through the undercard real quick. Uh, UFC debut for Rodolfo Bellotto, uh coming off contender series. He's a, he's a pretty sizable favorite at minus 400. No money to be made there, but him being uh, a debuting UFC fighter, I'm very excited to see that one. Um, I think that he has a lot of promise. It's a, it's a light heavyweight fight, so obviously anything can happen. Anybody can get clipped, but I think Bellotto is going gonna, is gonna to get a victory here and then kind of start – making that move in the, in the UFC rankings. Uh, I'm excited about that prospect for sure. Uh, same with Zachary Reese. I think that he's going to go in there and smoke Cody Brundage in the middleweight division. You, his UFC debut as well, coming off the contender series. Very excited for that one. He's six and zero. um, actually a decent favor. Right now he's at minus two thirty five. The line keeps moving up. I think people are doing the research and, and figuring out who this kid is and kind of putting their money behind him. Um, I like Zachary Reese a lot for the undercard. Uh, we touched on it earlier. Misha Tate, Julia Avila, uh, should be a, a, a main, a main card fight. Um, but every time Misha Tate's on a card, you got to talk about her. Uh, she's taken on Julia Avila, who's uh, a hot prospect in the division, kind of 
seems like they're kind of using Misha Tate as a stepping stone for her to maybe get a win. And then now she has a Misha Tate W on her record and that looks good uh, no matter who you are. Mm-hmm. And then just t- touching on the back end of the main, main card, Puna Lee Soriano, don't sleep. The guy's got dynamite in his hands. He's probably going to put this dude away early. Uh, of course, for Clay Guida, always a fun fighter, man. Even though he's always an underdog, the dude always finds a way to make it close in the end of his career. It's crazy. And then, Sean Brady versus Kelvin Gastelum. Kelvin Gastelum making his return to welterweight. Very excited to see if he can make, talking about Jalen Turner weight cut, very excited to see if Kelvin Gastelum can make that 170 mark. Because if he can make the weight and kind of make a run in this welterweight division, that can be scary to a lot of guys. Because that, like I said, dynamite in, dynamite in hands. Kelvin Gastelum's got that one, two that puts people to sleep with that heavy left hand. And then he's fighting Sean Brady, who's coming off a, an upsetting loss to Bilal Muhammad. A lot of people had him. Winning that one versus Bilal, people thought he was going to win. Obviously, he got finished there. Um, so it's going to. This is more of a comeback fight for Brady to see um, if he can put away a, a crafty veteran like Gastelum and, and and get his way back up into that into that division. Um, so that's another fight on the card that I'm super excited for because a lot of implications on that one as well. And that's just kind of the quick rundown of the card, man. Just you know, put it in a put it in a Ziploc real quick. <laughs> Throw it in a blender, serve it up to them. That's all right. Let's go. That was really good, dude. That was like like 2 minute just run down gave you like five picks. Five, like just a whole part lay right there that you could you could throw throw five dollars in and probably make a hefty return. Yeah, and then send me a Venmo for my hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Well deserved <laughs> hard work. <laughs> But the last fight you talked about was the fight I thought you'd start with. Uh, was the Sean Brady? I want to go. Gaslam. I want to go bottom to top. You know, hey. get in, just breeze through that undercard real quick. Absolutely, show those guys love as they deserve. It's a fun, fun undercard there. Uh, but Sean Brady versus Gaslam is a really, really interesting fight. Sean Brady, as you mentioned, coming off a loss against uh, my boy Bilal, uh, in, in in dramatic fashion too. I mean, that definitely takes a toll on somebody but i feel like he took the proper time away and he's been kind of just training and 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 those philly guys man i'm a big fan although i hate the fucking sixers can't stand that that gracie gym in philly is no joke though bro yeah can't stand the sixers but that gracie gym is legit legit i'd love to one day visit and and hopefully interview those guys but it's 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 fucking sick man fuck Fuck the fuck the Sixers, uh, but yeah, man, that's that's definitely the funnest fight. Yeah, there we go. Let's come on, come on, let's go. Uh, but yeah, bro, that's it for the UFC. Uh, uh, love the picks, love the picks, but let's let's get into some boxing, man, because because one thing we had in common is 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 both of our first combat loves, real loves, was boxing. That's where it started for us both. Your old man getting you in. For me, it was like the Rocky movies. Like, that was like, holy shit. Uh, and this weekend, we have a really fascinating fight. The the superstar, the 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 internet icon, Ryan Garcia, taking on Oscar Duarte for a championship. How much, dude... When 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 I when when they announced that this was for a belt, I was so fucking happy. Is there actually a belt on the line? This is a belt. This is an actual one hundred and forty, at least for from what they're really promoting it to be, is a legit belt. Holy shit! Okay, but you that know how things for me. <laughs> you know how boxing is, though. No, of course, there's a belt for everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this participation belt, but I, I feel like this is a real one. And one one knock I have against like these younger next generation of boxers is the lack of like world titles. I feel like there's a few guys like Devin Haney, Tia Fimo, like those guys are doing it right. They're going for the belts that I feel like builds the superstar versus a guy like Tank who's doing incredible, incredible things, selling out arenas. He puts boxing on a, on a different scale every time he fights, but there's no world titles. Right. There's no world titles. It, so it like, does get like, frustrating, man, especially when you're forking up your money to watch a pay-per-view like Ryan versus Tank. Expensive pay-per-view. People are, you know, we're putting their hard-earned dollars to watch it, and there's there's no belt on the line there. Uh, it was very frustrating. So I understand that aspect 100%. There, if you're if you're doing a boxing pay-per-view where you're asking people for their money, there should be some kind of belt on the line, you would think. Always, man. I agree one gazillion percent. And we got it. Ryan Garcia is doing it, man. Chris Duarte so, for a world title. What do you think about it? I think this automatically like sells itself as 
the storyline here automatically becomes, is Ryan Garcia a true boxing contender coming off that loss to Tank that we saw, uh, the devastating TKO? Uh, dude, that, I mean, come on. That body shot by Tank was fucking unreal. Uh, so th- I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, this this the storyline here is, is Ryan Garcia really going to be a boxer? Because we know he's like the social media icon guy. He he could go and do whatever he wants when it comes to like the, the social media side of things. And then, you, can, you, you know, he has the boxing stuff that he can do, obviously. But is he going to be like a true contender in this division? Like, is this – and we know – my thing was like he went down to – one thirty. he was at 135 versus Tank – no rehydration clause was there for a reason because tank knew that dude was going to be massive coming in. Now we get Ryan at 140, uh more natural weight class for him where he can kind of use uh that natural size and natural ability without having to be too depleted and, and you know and size himself down uh for no reason. So I'm excited to see that. Um obviously we have Ryan Garcia switching his trainers. He's over there with Derek James in Dallas. You know, he's that guy trains the studs like Errol Spence. Jermel Charlo, Anthony Joshua, and the likes of all those guys. Um, he's good, you know, going, you gotta, you gotta assume that he's going over there to ensure up his defense, you know, get that, get that defense looking crisp because he's got the hand speed and he can throw all the punches. So you gotta assume he went over there for a reason. Uh, new look, hopefully go over there, enhance his defense a little bit so he can compete with these guys in the top of the division. And then on the other side, he, obviously when Ryan Garcia fights, we're always looking at Ryan, you know, he's the, he's the pretty boy, you know what I mean? Golden boy kid. I mean, for, for now, anyway, um, Duarte, people are sleeping on him. You know, he's got those heavy hands, 21 knockouts is nothing that is nothing to, you know, blink an eye at. That's for sure. 11 fight win streak, all those by knockout. Um, my, my negative here is he's coming up from 135 where 135 didn't seem to be his natural weight class. So now he's going to be at an even bigger size disadvantage versus a naturally 140 boxer like Ryan Garcia, um, I don't know, man. This is uh, I think like this is just going to be a fight that's meant to be a Ryan Garcia showcase. Um, but I think it's versus a guy that's good enough to put up a fight to make Ryan Garcia look even better. You know what I'm saying? Does that make mm-hmm. sense? Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. It's fascinating. One thing you 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 threw in a little uh a little slick comment about the uh, golden boy, and he's 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 there for now. Did you see the press conference today? I did, dude. That was oh my God. honestly. I will say this: I am not the biggest Ryan Garcia fan. I'll be the first to admit that. I think he's very like, um, he's very like, he's too social media heavy for me. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I mean, that's just I don't know. For me, that's a lot. The fact that he kind of brought it today at the, at the presser and was like kind of put his foot down for once and i was like okay ryan i see you bro let's go <laughs> brought his mouthpiece today with yeah. de la hoya's rolling his eyes behind him the oh, whole time bernard bernard's over there fuming i was like let's uh, go right yeah. this is the type of shit that's gonna make me a fan if we can keep ryan rolling on this on this mean streak like this man like this is the kind of shit that i like agreed i loved every second of i've like watched it a few times over now and i couldn't believe it because like he literally got on that stage and turned around and said, gave just a finger to all his, like both his promoters. Literally. And That's Oscar big. rolling his eyes, like, what is he talking about? That shit was gold. That shit was yeah. gold. And I, and I haven't really seen Twitter's response to it. So I can't wait to do that after this, mm-hmm. but agreed with what you said, like that, like things like that make me fans of people like, like yeah. standing up and talking we all know Oscar's an absolute dog shit promoter. We all know this. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's even better whenever, like, the guy under him, his biggest star at the moment, is also saying, like, you guys suck. You guys say this, but do this. This guy talking I mean, about he never dude, let a white was- guy beat him, and he got <laughs> knocked out of the ring by, a 50, by you know, Joe Smith Jr. Uh, dude, he brought it today, man. And it's mm-hmm. kind of – it reminds me of – when Floyd was under Golden Boy, then he kind of turned heel on Golden Boy and kind of broke off and did his own thing, beat De La Hoya to officially like kind of, you know, put that behind him and take that next step. But he was, you know, Floyd was kind of on that same kind of on that same shit when he was leaving Golden Boy and, you know, claiming that they they were taking money out of his pocket when he could be making that money on his own, which true turned to be true. The guy's doing very well for himself since then. Um yeah, man. So Ryan being able to bring that mouthpiece today and kind of put the guys in charge of his fights, bro. Like the guys that are li- that he's literally fighting for. And then then they brought the face off out, dude. Mm. And Bernard Hopkins is standing behind Marte <laughs> and not behind De La Ho- not behind Garcia, bro. I was like, this shit is theater, bro. This is amazing. Yeah. 
Yeah. It just brings it like it, it turned a fight for me where I was like, okay, Ryan's gonna go out here and beat this guy. Okay, cool. Am I gonna watch it? Yeah, am I excited for it? Sure. But now I'm like chomping at the bit, like, what's he gonna say after he wins this fight, dude? What's he gonna say on the microphone? What's Oscar gonna say in the post? Like it just adds a completely different element to it now where I'm like, I it's must see TV for me at this yeah. point. Agreed, agreed. If it wasn't before now, it's it's like even more exciting of a matchup. But yes. like with all this happening, with all this unfolding, it feels like Ryan Garcia is not only fighting uh, Oscar Duarte this weekend, he's fighting Golden Boy and Bernard and Oscar De La Hoya. Like if he wins on Saturday, bro, he, it's like the biggest fuck you to Golden Boy that that that's ever happened, because this is, I believe, his last fight under contract. So if he wins this and he leaves Golden Boy with the world title, and this is this is the guy that Bernard was like, uh, 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 Duarte's a, a superstar in the making. He's the next Mexican this, and he's a power yeah. puncher, and he's you know all these things that they would usually be saying about Ryan. All but right. the fact that like Ryan is is going to like is is you know exposing them on their bullshit. They're now like hyping up the other guy, which is the biggest, biggest problem with boxing promoters and promoting in general. But I'm just really hoping this works out in Ryan's favor. I agree, man. The kid has all the potential and all the talent in the world. Like I said, for me, it's this is the it's time for him to answer that question of are you really that guy that everybody has said that you are? Like, are you really gonna be that next? echelon of fighter that comes in and starts winning belts and is like the face of the division and, and, and competing in these competitive title bouts or are you just like the social media pretty boy that boxes for fun and get makes a lot of money that way i feel like and then after the tank fight everybody was like see i knew yeah. i knew it you know i knew it i knew he wasn't about it so now this is his time to you know come off that loss and improve to people that this is what he's but meant to do. And I think that that's what he, I think that's what's going to happen for him. I think he has a new fire lit under his ass now for coming sure. off a loss for the first time in his life, tra changing camps, you know, trying to get, give the middle finger to his promotion, you know, on, on their event. I think that he's got a lot to fight for now, man. I think he's got a, a lot more fires lit in that belly than he did before. For sure, man. For sure. He's really coming into his own, which is, which is a treat to watch. And, Again, I'm just really praying, bro, that it all works out for him because it'll be it'll be the greatest thing in the world to see another L for Oscar De La Hoya. I mean, um, yeah, sorry. coming coming from a, I'm like the like no one I like I'm the biggest Oscar De La Hoya like hater ever. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on that train as well. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's 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 time, especially after the last one, how they responded to to his loss. Oh, and then, they weren't even in the building for him. Like after like, he left, come on. Like, some sad shit, bro. They were running out of there, like sprinting out of that building. And that's horrible because Ryan Ryan stood up there like a gangster. Like mm -hmm. it happened. I'm here. I'm still. I'm still gonna keep boxing. I'm still that guy. And that's exactly how we would want a guy to handle the loss. Mm -hmm. But but on the promotions end, they they handled it like absolute trash bags. And and again, please like like combat gods let this work out for ryan garcia like let this work out because it's real convenient that they match him against another power puncher after his last fight mm -hmm. it's real convenient real, if they really had his best interest they're not going to throw him in there against a, a guy who can knock his head off at, at, like the last guy could they're going to try to maybe not give him a layup but give him a guy who's who's more beatable but 100 yeah like you would think that that would be if they were really trying to get behind Ryan and push him as the face of Golden Boy, that's the fight that this would have been for them. Um, I think that this is going to blow up in their face, though, because I think Ryan's going to put this kid away, to be honest with you. Let's fucking go. We'll leave it at that. Uh, last thing this weekend, the bare knuckle. Oh, a little yeah. Mike Perry action for us. We love, we love, we love a Mike Perry fight. Uh, I mean, dude, you can never sleep on a Mike Perry fight. That's for sure. Bare knuckle. I mean, bare knuckle is a bit gruesome for my liking. Big group, especially yeah. bare knuckle boxing, where it's just like, you know, that's that's a little much. I I, I like that bare knuckle Muay Thai. My boy, my boy Sean Schubert really put me on to that bare knuckle Muay Thai. I've been watching it lately, dude. That shit is fucking sick. Yeah, sick man, sick it, stuff. The bare knuckle stuff is really on the rise. Um, you know, we have, we have the game Bread FC them doing bare knuckle MMA, which is crazy. Bare knuckle uh, BKFC obviously has been doing bare knuckle boxing for a while. They're probably the 
the biggest promotion for that stuff. Um, but they always come around like maybe once a year and give us like a really good bare knuckle FC card. And I'm like, man, if they did this stuff like on a regular basis, like cards that were like this stacked, I could really like get behind and watch the stuff regular. Cause I don't, I don't mind the, the blood and the swelling and the, and the gruesomeness of it, you know, it's, it comes with the territory when you're fighting bare knuckle and yeah. it's all, it, it, it looks bad. It looks really bad, but it's all for entertainment for me anyway. Um, but dude, Mike Perry versus Eddie Alvarez, like how could you be mad at that? Then you got like Ben Rothwell versus Todd Duffy, two former UFC heavyweights, like, Jesus Christ, don't blink in that one. Somebody might actually die. And then we got like Jer <laughs> Jeremy Stevens versus Jimmy Rivera, dude, like two old UFC staples. I mean, like there, there's fights on this card. Beck Rawlings and Christine Ferreira. Like, oh, if you're if you're a fan of like bare knuckle sports, like this is the card for that. And I think it's like I said, headlined by Mike Perry. You never know what the hell that guy's gonna do. And obviously the underground king, absolute mm -hmm. legend, Eddie Alvarez on the other side from him, like. It's going to be some good stuff. There's going to be, I guarantee you, we're going to be seeing millions of social media clips from this fight card because, first of all, the names that are on it, second of all, how gruesome it is, and then obviously, it's going to be, it's going to turn out some high, highlight reel finishes for sure. For sure, man. Mike Perry's must see bare knuckle uh, TV, and you know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to again, like you said, the clips and stuff. That's, that's, that's the best part for me. All the, all the shit talk, and we'll see if McGregor's in the building. Yeah, he loves that bare knuckle stuff too, huh? He, him and the, him and the, what is it, the CEO or the promoter? They, they're like low key boys, kind of, right? Are they? I don't, I don't know. I just, I just seen that the, him in the last one, and I was wondering why he was there, but he showed them mad love. Mm -hmm. It is strange. They bring in a lot of people too, like a lot of MMA guys are cage side or ringside. Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of guys in the building that are there to support, which is always, it's always crazy to see the, the, the people that they pull into their events for sure. Yeah, man. I'm not, again, I'm not the biggest bare knuckle guy, if I'm being honest, I'm probably not watching <laughs> oh. it. Yeah. I don't All blame right. you, man. I will have it on. I'll tell you that. And yeah. I will say this, the reason why is because, you know, my boy, Steve, that always comes mm. with me to the events and whatnot. He's the biggest Mike Perry fan that I know. Is he, he would okay? He he wouldn't let me not put that on my TV if we were watching fights <laughs> together. So it will definitely be on. I'll obviously be running the, the dual screens, but I I usually run like two TVs, so we'll definitely be having that on. UFC on. Boxing is usually late night, so we'll have that on after that. It's it's a full night Saturday night, man. That's why we had to come on here, chop it up. Uh, lots of fights to talk about, like we said, which is like we're, this is why we're running so long because there's just too much to talk about, man. There there's is, too much bro. juice. There was there the, this weekend. And, and, and this is the last month of December. Just there's a lot of fun fights here for us. Uh, so maybe, maybe another Chris DiCarlo appearance. We'll see. I know for Thanks, sure. Man. I know for sure I'm jumping on your uh, your program before the end of the year. I don't know if you want to talk about it, but we're going to do some, uh, gonna talk about it anyways. Fuck it. Yeah. We'll do some, <laughs> some Cage Titans awards. Yeah, um, yeah, for sure, man. We'll definitely be running running something over on my side. Uh, we know that Cage Titans is doing their awards and their posts and everything. We're going to come on, um, chop it up a little bit, do some Cage Titans awards. Maybe like, I don't know, should we do like full awards or should we do like fight of the year and then like give like three or four good options? Maybe not stamp one, but maybe like yeah. talk about them. You know, I mean, we'll, run, we'll run them down and see which. So give everybody a little bit of love. Agreed. I like that too. I because I, I picking fight of the year would be tough. I feel like we 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 all have one or two in mind, but we we got to talk about the five or six awesome fights that we watched, exactly. uh, and, and some of the other ones. But yeah, definitely check that out on Chris's channel. Check out the 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 Caged In podcast. You find out more of Chris. Follow him on Insta. Subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, Look at the merch. Come on. Come on, I don't have mine on today. I wish I fucking wore it. My bad. <laughs> but I definitely got mine upstairs in the crib. You best know that. My boy, Sir. Chris, I appreciate the time, brother, tonight. Uh, again, there's no better person to call on short notice than my boy, Chrissy D. Appreciate you too, man. Anytime you need me, you know I'm here for you. Uh, always a good time. Like we we could have had this call not even recorded, and this would have been a good-ass time. You know, fight. So anytime you want to talk fights, man, you know I'm your guy. Uh, hopefully Josh is over there having a great time in Milan. Thank you, my boy. Well, have a good night, bro. We'll talk soon.